Please follow the safety instructions before performing any maintenance on your battery charger. Disconnect and lock out all power to the battery charger. Turn off the charger's internal AC and DC circuit breakers. Turn off all AC power upstream from the battery charger. Disconnect the battery from the charger output terminals. This includes remote sense wires connected to the battery if they were installed. Verify there is no voltage on the AC input on TB1 using a voltmeter. Do the same for the DC output using a voltmeter. Again, it is important to follow these steps when performing any and every type of maintenance performed on an AT battery charger. This video will demonstrate how to install the auxiliary alarm relay card for any AT10.1 series group 1 battery charger rated 6 amps to 25 amps. It's important to reference the field instruction JD5025-00 which provides the step-by-step -step procedure given in this video. Again, before starting any maintenance on this charger, please be sure to have followed the safety instructions at the beginning of this video. The tools required for this installation are as follows. One static wristband, one fourth nut driver. You can also use a battery operated drill for this application as well. A hammer, and a pair of dikes. Upon opening the field kit, please inspect and check for the following items. An auxiliary relay alarm card, serial interconnection cable assembly, AT10.1 penthouse shroud with four factory installed PC board standoffs, an AT10.1 penthouse top, AT10.1 penthouse blank panel, one rubber grommet, six plastic wire ties, and 14 self-tapping screws. To begin this installation, we can proceed by opening the front door of the AT charger. Once the door is open, we can see that there's a safety shield we want to proceed and take off the safety shield so we can have access to the internal components. Once the safety shield is removed, we want to look at the top of the AT10 Group 1 charger. We need to open one of the top knockout holes. Once the knockout is removed, we need to install the rubber grommet onto the open hole. We can now proceed to mount the penthouse shroud onto the top of the AT-10. We need to make sure that the holes align between the bottom of the penthouse shroud and the top of the AT-10.1. The bottom of the penthouse is identified by a notch on one side. Secure the penthouse using four of the self-tapping screws provided. For this next step, we need to use our static band. Place the band around your wrist and attach the static cord to the ground stud on the door of the charger. We can now remove the auxiliary relay card from the anti-static bag. Verify the jumper setting of J4 on the aux relay board to match the DC output voltage of your battery charger. Always handle the PC board by their edges. Check for proper orientation and align the board holes with the plastic standoff guide posts. Push firmly on all four clips to snap into place.
Once the aux board is installed, we can now begin to install the serial interconnection cable. Connect one end of the cable to J1 on the auxiliary card and then pass the other end of the cable through the rubber grommet. Run the cable alongside the wire harness and then connect the other end of the cable to J2 on the main control board. Secure the cable to the existing wire harness using some plastic wire ties. Now that the serial cable is installed, we need to check our work. Ensure all standoff latches are properly holding the auxiliary alarm card. Ensure that the cable is installed properly at both ends and seat it tightly at the main control board and at the aux board. Ensure that the serial cable is securely fastened with tie wraps to the wire harness and verify the jumper setting of J4 on the auxiliary relay board to match the DC output voltage of your AT10 Group 1 charger. Once all this is verified we can finalize by installing the front and top panels of the penthouse using the remaining self-tapping screws. The short bend on the front panel indicates the top. At this point, the installation is now complete. We can proceed and replace the plexiglass safety shield and then we can close the front door. Again, it is important to reference the field instruction JD5025-00, which provides the step-by-step -step procedure given in this video. One final note, it is important to note that if any user alarm contacts at the TB4 A and B are to drive inductive DC loads or any larger DC relay, then an external protective diode be applied at the external DC coil to avoid equipment damage. Please see application note JD5011, which will explain this in much detail. This concludes the installation for this video, and now you can proceed to bring all external power sources back online and proceed to energize the AT10 Group 1 charger. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel using the subscribe button below. For other Hindle Power how-tos, visit our YouTube channel, Hindle Power Inc.